and we wish, uh, wish the Secretary of State well uh, at the OECD um, today. Uh, I now want to talk a little bit about the tech plan uh, that we've launched today. Uh, digital technology will present huge opportunities and challenges for the UK through the rest of the decade. And as we look forward to the next election, today what we're doing is we're asking all of the political parties to think long and hard about how digital technology can help them deliver for the British people. And let me be clear, we should be ambitious. The UK has many real strengths when it comes to tech that are the envy of other economies around the world. The sector's contribution uh, to the economy increased by 25% in the last decade, with the sector now adding over £150 billion to the economy annually and em employing uh, almost 2 million people. This makes the UK tech sector by far the largest in Europe, one of the country's most valuable economic assets. But the global landscape is changing, and we're in a world of resurgent strategic competition in which our global competitors are focusing much more strategically on tech. We cannot simply rest on past successes. It's time to move beyond the hype and the cliches about being a tech superpower or a unicorn nation and to focus on delivery. It's not going to be enough to simply be a world leader in developing bits of tech or some successful technology companies. What really uh, matters and will matter through the rest of this decade at a national level is how we use tech for positive purpose, to deliver better outcomes for people, society, economy, and planet. And that's what Tech UK's plan focuses on. With this document, we're hoping to start a conversation with all the political parties about how the next government can turn the promise of technology into practice. It addresses a broad swathe of opportunities and challenges, which means, I'm afraid, it is a rather long document. But the point is that tech isn't just about how we encourage more shiny tech startups or self-driving cars. It's about how we use the tools that we have at our disposal uh, to make a better world. And the prize available, if we get this right, is significant. A better skilled, better paid workforce. An NHS that's fit for the future. A faster, lower cost route to net zero. A more productive economy. And a restored sense of community safety and trust. With coherent and concerted action, technology can help to deliver on the broad political objectives of the next government. And we believe strongly that technology policy should be at the heart of policy thinking of any political party that aspires to government. But I want to stress that this is not just about tech solutionism. Tech does not have all of the answers to the world's complex economic, political, social and environmental questions. Tech does not make the world more simple, and tech companies will all be, always be focused on their commercial interests. But it does give us new tools that, if used well by governments alongside other policies and interventions, can provide new opportunities to do things differently, find new approaches, and find new solutions. Tech UK's tech plan sets out 18 opportunities that we believe the next government should take to deliver these better outcomes. Now, this report has been developed uh, through a dialogue with our members and technology companies, large and small, operating here in the UK. Now, whilst many of them are hugely optimistic about the potential for innovation and growth and the UK's fundamental strengths in tech, they are frustrated that the UK has been dropping off the pace in recent years. Brexit, COVID, the war in Ukraine, not to mention the significant political turmoil of recent years, have all had an impact. We need to recognise that and pick up the pace. We've started to see things improve with a new Prime Minister who has a clear understanding of the opportunity that tech can bring and, and the establishment of a proper department for tech in government with the creation of the Department for Science, Innovation and Technology. In recent months, we've seen a welcome acceleration of the government's tech programme and DSIT is clearly a structure that any future government should keep. But the decisions and choices ahead through the rest of the decade will not be easy. In many ways, the global economy has become more complex, from the geopolitics of tech supply chains to questions about how to regulate AI. The need to get tech policy right has never been greater. 
and there will be few easy right answers and diff difficult trade-offs between conflicting policy objectives will have to be balanced. And to get that right, the process of decision-making requires a, a clear sense of strategic direction, clarity of purpose uh, about what you're trying to achieve. So as the political parties think about tech, we want them to think about purpose, about what they want to achieve in government and how technology can help them deliver. So in our UK tech plan, we've set out five challenges that we believe have to be overcome before the end of the decade and 18 opportunities that we believe the next government should seize. The five challenges will be familiar to those working in the sector. Indeed, they came up consistently in all of our discussions with members in the development of this report. Skills and adoption. How do we upskill the workforce and drive digital adoption in firms? The scale-up challenge. How do we create the conditions for tech firms to scale in the UK? Investment. How do we beat international competition to attract inward investment? Procurement. How do we make the best use of technology across the public sector? And data. How do we build better data ecosystems that enable transformational change? These are persistent difficult challenges that have been holding back growth and innovation and productivity. And we have to remain committed to solving them. According to the government's own analysis, doing so could increase the sector's contribution to the economy by 41 billion a year and create an additional 600,000 jobs. So the, the, the prize of getting this right is very significant. The 18 opportunities that we set out focus on how the government working in partnership with the sector can deliver better outcomes for people, society, economy, and planet. For people, we can build better digital public services built around their needs. We can work together to rebuild trust and safety online. We can create new pathways for digital skills, and we can ensure that everyone has access to digital services. For our society, we can deliver the digital transformation that the NHS and social care systems need. Use tech to unblock our, crim our criminal justice system, regain our lead in open data, strengthen our tech clusters around the country, and embed an ethical approach to responsible AI. For the economy, we can help SMEs to digitize, enable startups to scale up, improve our innovation ecosystem, strengthen our tech commercialization, and build a properly strategic approach to digital trade. And for the planet, we can invest to become a green tech hub, empower people and businesses to achieve net zero, and make tech itself greener. We're not saying that technology can fix every problem, but we are saying that used and implemented well alongside a wider set of policies and interventions, technology can play a big part in delivering better outcomes. These are opportunities that neither the private sector nor government can achieve by themselves, but working together, there is the opportunity to deliver transformational change for the UK. And so we urge all political parties, as they develop their manifestos ahead of the next general election, to read our report, to engage with it, to engage with us, to question us on these ideas, but fundamentally to put forward an agenda for positive change in the UK. Now, finally, I just wanted to talk about the issue which I'm sure many of you are thinking about today, which is AI. Uh, somewhat ironically, um, the launch of ChatGPT in November last year happened in the week that we were hosting our sixth annual Digital Ethics Summit. That series of events running for six years has brought together leading technologists, academics, policymakers, civil society groups, and leading technologists, uh, as well as, uh, uh, yeah, science fiction writers, including Ted Chang, uh, to talk about how we develop a system of digital ethics, governance, and regulation to ensure the responsible and safe use of powerful new technologies, including AI. Over the years, we've looked at cap capability and in institution building, ethical codes and principles, the, oper the operationalization of ethical principles in organizations, and models of governance and regulation. My point being that none of these issues are new 
And there is a huge body of work and expertise within and beyond the tech sector that can be drawn upon to get this right. Indeed, there is a broad consensus on what the underlying ethics of AI should be. And these principles can provide the basis on which laws, rules, technical standards, and best practices can be developed for specific sectors, industries, and jurisdictions. Now, without a doubt, the rapid progress of large language models and the rapid development of new tools built on generative AI has led to a dramatic acceleration of innovation and the emergence of many concerns, particularly in the media. Technology is moving quickly, but that doesn't mean that we can't regulate it. We can, and we need to work through the issues systematically. The government's recent white paper on AI provides a good starting point for how we should approach this issue. We believe there are aspects of the approach that now need to be accelerated, such as the funding, uh, funding the capacity building inside government and relative, uh, relevant regulators that needs to take place. There may well be other areas that need strengthening, such as rules around foundation models and aspects of technology tending towards what is called general AI. And of course, the UK needs to be at the heart of any international discussions about the development of international rules and standards around these technologies. And we welcome the discussions that have been taking place uh, in recent days. But we should also be putting just as much effort into thinking about how we can use AI to address the very immediate existential challenges uh, that the world faces, such as climate change, biodiversity loss, and the rapid development of new vaccines. We can shape how these technologies are used, and we can use them to do important things, but we do need to act together with purpose, which is really the theme running throughout the report that we've launched today, and I hope will be the theme of our discussions through the course of the day, uh, and is ultimately our key message to the UK's political parties ahead of the next election. Use technology to build a better Britain. Thank you very much. Thank you.